as a buyer or as a seller when you're about to use this kind of method, um, um, which is which is auctioning in this case? Um, what are those things that one should use or or take into consideration when they're about to sell or buy a house using auctions? All right, and I think. One of the key things is before you go to auction, you have to familiarize yourself with the property. I mean, it can be from pictures, visiting the property before um, the auction starts so that you understand what, it, what you're putting yourself into and what it is that you're buying. Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on the Private Property Facebook page. It's 7 p.m. and it's a weekday, so where else would you rather be than right here with us where we talk everything and anything property? If you are seeing my face for the first time, my name is Dumi and I am your host. Welcome to a place where we are going to educate you on how to take those bold property steps so that you can grow your property portfolio where you buy, you sell, you invest, where you do all of these things in this industry. We want to make sure that you are armed with the right information for you to be able to do that. So if you are joining us on Facebook, hoi us that green heart and tell us that you are here. Mark the register. If you're joining us on the Twitter spaces, thank you so much for always coming through. And please share the space, retweet and share the space to make sure that people join in as much as possible. If you think someone is going to benefit from hearing the conversation we're talking about tonight, then make sure that you send them that link. Um, tonight we are talking a very... A very special topic. We've spoken a bit about auctions before and a little bit on how they have gone online and they have accustomed because of COVID-19. And tonight we're speaking the spike um, in the in the in the property space, you know, especially in South Africa. And I'm joined by Luanda Tlotolimaje, uh, who is a transactional banker at Galeti Real Estate. Luanda, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Very good evening to you. And um, welcome. Uh, I'm welcoming all your listeners. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Um, so tonight we're talking a little bit about the, the spike uh, that you guys are seeing um, in the, or the spike or lack thereof um, in, the, in the property industry when it comes to auctions and in the auction spaces. Can you really talk to us through um, the trends um, that you guys have been seeing over the past two, three years? I know with COVID, it's really changed um, the way you guys do business, but um, we spoke a little bit about how the online spaces are helping you guys to continue the auctions. So please talk to us about the, uh, how the space looks currently, how doing business looks for you guys, and some of the trends you guys have picked up thank you yeah we are actually entering a very interesting space in property uh, both commercial both um, residential uh, cars and you know because people have been um, hit by a wave that nobody I mean I thought a current like this would ever hit the economic um, you know the economic market so the trends we're seeing is people selling, uh, people selling because they need to invest their money properly. Uh, people are moving from small, uh, from their large houses into small properties just so that they can be in compact, uh, compact spaces to avoid um, certain types of, you know, um, over like expenditures. And um, in the space of commercial properties, obviously, because the 2020 came, you know, to us all as a surprise, and many offices are left um, without any um, employees inside. But these days, we realize that it's important for other companies to um, invite. I mean, like today, I know that, for instance, Salgar decided to open their offices back again, and they're back in business. And there was a welcome speech from their CEO today. Um, wanting the whole staff to start the interaction with um, with the markets again, which I feel like it's very interesting because South Africans are not um, um, indoor type of uh, people. We are more outdoors. We like to touch our clients. We want to go out and see what's going on, meet your client to find out if they're struggling with anything. So if you are only virtual and there's no touch 
you know, touching your client in a manner that we were usually um, prepared to. It be it, like business becomes a little bit difficult, and we don't come to decisions much quicker than uh, than before. Um, so so yeah, um, online has become very interesting. I mean, it's a space that many of us never thought it will take off in South Africa, but yes, it's taking off so good. I mean, we see a lot of marketers they're going digital. I mean, we have friends that have been invited to come work overseas so that they can um, and la- like um, better their education in terms of digital space and how best they can uh, wrap their clients into uh, thinking digitally going forward. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot happening in the space. And I think, yes, we just have to be open minded and open ourselves up to the new changes that have uh, that we find ourselves in. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and, you know, I want us to talk a little bit more about um, the auctions themselves because they are just one mode of um, any kind of investor or a property buyer or a prospective or property owner would like to use in terms of acquiring a property. Um, can you talk us a bit th- uh through the, the some of the advantages and the disadvantages of of getting a property this way, because um, in, if previously it wasn't, or if COVID really um, shook things a bit for for the property industry and getting uh, houses this way, people might not think that it's really um, necessary anymore, or this this is a way that is um, still effective because because of the different um, restrictions that COVID brought, and with the online spaces that have now come in, the technological advancements that you mentioned. Um, just talk us through some of these advantages that have come up, you know, because of um, the technological advancements, one. And number two, just because of the mode of auctioning and um, some of the things that um, an, a buyer or a seller is going to, to get as an advantage from using this method. Okay. So auction is becoming like an increasingly mainstream that um, the both buyers and sellers are moving into. Um, there's, a, you know, it's easy access to the market. Um, you get a larger pool of, you know, potential buyers, and these are buyers that are potential like, that are actually engaged to buy the properties. Unlike when you go the private route and you try to find your own buyers, and now you have to find somebody, try to get them interested. With auction, especially um, online auction, we speak to people who are potentially um, looking for your property um, that you want to sell. And we try to match those with whatever the property that we're bringing into auction. I mean, um, when we talk about competitive pricing, I mean, competitive pricing, I mean, you have a number of uh, of bidders. I mean, you can have uh, five to 10 bidders. So you can just imagine whatever the reserve price um, you thought you had in mind and maybe might not be able to reach the required price, you almost, you, you get surprised at how best some of those competitive bidding can actually enhance the pricing of your of, of, of your property. Yeah, no, definitely. And um, has any of the technological advancements changed the way um, the business is done fundamentally? Like uh, in w- in one of our previous episodes, we spoke about how it, that the turnaround time is quicker. Um, what are some of the other advantages that you guys have seen um, in terms of ge- closing that sale? So most of the bidders, they come pre-qualified from um, their banks. Um, some of them will tell you, I have cash, I don't even need to get pre-qualified by any bank. So that on its own, um, I mean, before we even go to auction, the, the, the seller has already got his conditions of sale, the buyer has the conditions of sale. And I mean, with that conditions of sale, you are able to familiarize yourself with what to expect and what might come out of the, the, the auction. And um, yeah, I think it, before we even get people registered, we already know how much they know of the property that they're purchasing and what the seller is expecting and what the buyer is expecting. Oh, nice. Um, and 
let's go, let's go into uh, more of the disadvantages as well because those those are some of the things that I really want us to 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 touch on and um, I'm not I'm just remembering now that we didn't touch on those when we're speaking about auctions are there disadvantages are there specific ones that people should look out for well there's a yes there is a there's a disadvantage with each and every thing that you get yourself into, particularly with auction, uh, you find somebody has been pre-qualified and they go into the bidding um, because they probably had an understanding of the reserve price and where the reserve price was going to 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 end. But and, or unfortunately for them, you find that the price goes much higher and they actually end up bidding at a much higher price than they even know the, quali- the pre-qualification. And once they get out of the, um, once they go back to their banks and say, this is how much we've, um, I've, I've, I took the bidding for, they have to go back now and look at what his background is. Is he going to be able to service his loan? Is he going to be able to get um, some of the equity money from maybe a private equity company does he have money that he's going to put down as his skin on the game, um, like skin in the game? So those type of things, they actually tend to um, disadvantage the buyer because you find a, a, a transaction is hanging and we're not able to close it because there's a lot of loose ends that were not tied or maybe that the that the buyer was surprised like to his surprise he took a bidding but he cannot raise the actual funding for the property that they're looking for so that could be one of the uh, disadvantages no, definitely. Um, I want us to yeah. really to jump into the myths now because, you know, there are myths that surround um, everything and especially in the property industry where people um, converse about this a lot. Um, talk to us about how um, people think that with auctions you'll pay more. You'll pay more because um, people are emotive at auctions so um, property valuers might not have a say in terms of the valuation of the property. So the bidding might start at 100,000 Rand for a property that's worth 50,000 Rand, for example. So let's talk a little bit more around that. Well, I would say it depends when you say um, the property might be worth 50,000 Rand. I mean, in your eyes, it might be worth 50,000 rands, but you find that there's history that is attached to the property. And who uh, maybe some of the bidders, when they come to the auction, they're not coming um, looking at the structure as it stands today, but they are looking at the future and the history of that property and how best they can actually uh, position it into the market, position it back into, into the market. So they look at how best they will be able to repurpose it and what sort of um, foot traffic that property will be able to um, um, uh, to attract. Um, and what type of an establishment can actually take off as um, one of the gems in those areas. So when bidders come to the auction, they're not they don't come with one mindset thinking that okay, I'm gonna pay um, the lowest price ever. But you must remember. If one is thinking about the lowest price ever, the one is thinking about the history behind the property, the one is thinking about, oh, you know, if I were to flip this property, this is the type of yield um, that I can produce from, 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 the, from the property. So, yes, there's different aspects to it. And that's why we say it is a competitive um, atmosphere where everyone comes with different ideas. And you see that 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 comp- and it's that competition for me where I feel like how is it regulated? You know, especially when we are in that space where people are are, are mentioning numbers, mentioning figures. You know, going um, at each other. Do we get to a point where? And I'm just I'm just saying this for someone who hasn't been in an auction before who might just wonder, you know, um, do we get to a point where we're like, okay, now this is where it stops because by the time we move from this bar, um, this is the most this property can be paid for. Like 500,000 is the most that this particular property can be paid for considering the location, considering um, its, its current value. Do we have such things happening in auctions? Um, yeah, well, auctions... Online, physical, we are all regulated. Whichever way you look at it, 
we are regulated. And I mean, like I said earlier, that different minds meet at an auctions table because they have different ideas on how best they can develop the, 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 the property. Yes, if you go higher, you go higher because of what it is that you believe in and you believe the property will be worth or is worth because sometimes you know there's a, a number of properties that I personally have seen and I I'm thinking that oh this is such a dilapidated building it could sell for a mere hundred thousand and you find the property is not selling um because of the way it looks but when somebody eventually finds interest in the property and understand the type of area the property is in. That's when it actually um, helps the buyer to decide on the price that they are willing to, to, to pay for it. That's why we say an auction is uh, like an auction is a buyer's willingness to buy at whatever price that they believe makes sense to them. All right. And b before I let you go tonight, I want us to talk a little bit more about how um, if you are in this space and or if you want to prospectively acquire a property um, through auctions, where is the first place I go? How do I go about it? If someone is watching us tonight and wants to get a property using an auction or wants to sell a property using auctions, how do they start? I think start with um, a real estate company. They will guide you. I know um, a lot of people tend to want to do something by themselves. I mean, we have people setting up stock sales to buy properties, but they never even get around it. But I've since come across a group of women in Rustenburg who has set up a consortium, um, not even a consortium, it was, they started off as a stock firm and they put money together. And what they did that they, they used to invite brokers to come and advise them um, what would be an ideal property to buy. So you must remember that whatever you buy is influenced by your loan to value. However much you've got in your pocket, it doesn't necessarily get you, you know, the most, um, the most beautiful of them all, but you have to get something that fits your pocket and you have to also um, understand that once you get your first property, you will have gone through all the challenges of understanding and um, the knowledge about, you know, property. And your second property becomes now um, something that you are priding yourself, it's, it's your pride and joy because you've learned so many mistakes and you don't repeat the same mistakes um, onto the next property. But make sure that you are very good friends with your banker as well because we are scared to speak to the bank. Speak to the bank, find out, okay, if my stock fell has put together so much money, um, uh, how much can you lend us so that we are able to buy this property? You have um, individual investors as well who partner with um, your um, development companies. You find them buying certain types of properties so that they can refurbish them and go forward. But you find that they have a certain percentage um, that they, 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 they have to pay, uh, they'd have to bring in as their skin in the, skin in the game. So it, um, it is something that you have to invest in yourself as well to understand what are the market trends? Where is the market headed to? Is it worth my while to buy a property in this industry or that industry? I mean, for instance, when you go back to 2020, mm. one of the sectors that wasn't as affected was the industrial sector and which uh, it seems to be, and I mean, it's proven itself to be the most critical for people to start investing in because you will never go wrong. You still need to store food. I mean, there's a large companies that are looking for storage. There's large companies that are still looking for um, properties like that for their logistics. So you need to know, okay, do I start with a property that I'm going to be paying municipal rates and all of that from my own pocket? Or do I buy an investment property that is yielding at least so much 
um, income every month. And this income will be able to uh, decide on your loan to value with the bank because banks also, they want to see you being um, enthusiastic enough to understand your finances. It shouldn't be up to them trying to discourage you or empower you, but you also have to empower yourself with bringing something to the table because only then the bank is able to listen to you. There's Mm -hmm. funds as well that you can, I mean, speak to that property funds that are, that that are uh, buying um, a whole, I mean, they are willing to teach the newcomers. So the information is there. You have the internet. Everybody's gone virtual. I mean, you can even set up a Zoom or a virtual meeting with your broker. And yeah. you. No, definitely. Thank you so much, Luanda. So much insights that you have brought to us tonight. And I believe that with, with such information, one can really start um, looking at starting and going into the market by getting a house through an, uh, an auction, you know. And one of the most important things that I feel you said is that um, in this space, it is how much the, the buyer is willing to spend for that particular property, how much they believe it's worth. And with such information, we will definitely be armed to know how to know which, which property to spend money on and what exactly they're going to do with it once they have done so thank you so much for joining us it was really a pleasure for 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 us to have the conversation have a good evening thank you very much have a good evening thank you so much cheers bye thank you and just like that, we reached the end of our conversation tonight where we were talking auctions and their spike in South Africa and what really buyers and sellers need to know. And if you are a prospective buyer or seller, this is how you will probably start to get into um, the, the property space. And this is a way you could pro- grow your property portfolio, you know, whether it's a bank repo, whether it's a, it's one of those um one of those properties that has has been liquidated, this it could be a, such a great way for you to start that that property portfolio. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, right here on the Private Property Podcast. My name is Dumi WMJ, and thank you so much for joining us. Till we see you again next time, every weekday, seven p.m. right here on the Private Property page. Have a good one.